What's up, everybody? Recently, I traveled to Oklahoma City to film what would become today's first episode of a new YouTube series I'm calling Comeback Kid TV. I'm excited to introduce this new series and to have my first guest. I hope you enjoy it. Let's get it started. to us bro how you doing how are y'all doing see i got pastor fred in oklahoma city tonight hanging out with us at the cave i think he got some pictures of our prayer time maybe a little bit of video so he's checking out how we do things but yeah the good life What's up everybody, it's Pastor Fred and uh, it's, a, it's a great, great day here on the vlog because I have my friend Joshua Jones. Yes sir. And uh, we're kicking off this new thing today that I'm working on. It's called Comeback Kid TV. The, the whole point of this is to share people's stories, influential people that I highly respect and I highly respect this young man share their stories of how they got to where they are today and uh hopefully you can take from this and and you know let it apply to your life and glean from it in some way form of fashion so uh let's get into it today we got mr joshua jones glad to be here man i'm glad to be here hey josh welcome to uh come back kid tv how you glad, doing man i'm doing awesome man. Right? i'm glad to be here it's yeah. a warm day in oklahoma city right and we got on coats got on coats we up here sweating and everything, right? <laughs> I've been in Oklahoma now for about uh, what four days, five days. Yep, yep, correct. And um, I've been on the road for a little, a little over, getting close to eight days now, and um, got to spend some time with my brother. Mm -hmm. He graciously opened his home for me to hang out with him. That we just got into like three days prior. Brother right. sleeping on boxes. Right, right. And. Uh, his dog has become my best friend. <laughs> hand down, hands down. It's, it's I'm a little sad because my dog thinks he treating you like you his owner instead of me. Right. So. <laughs> his name is George. Blessed dog. Blessed dog. <laughs> but he has an amazing family. His wife, um, love his wife. His children are amazing. Um, I got makeup done and all kinds of stuff. That's also. right. And, uh, it's just it's just really cool to see um, where you've grown. He and I were interns together mm -hmm. with Bishop Tony Miller, and um, it's been it's been pretty awesome, That's man. Two thousand five. Right, right. So, welcome, man. Welcome to the new the new uh, Comeback Kid TV show. And uh, you know, on this show, we've talked about it. Just kind of want to encourage people and share mm -hmm. the stories and all that kind of stuff. But I believe, man, your experience and your work in ministry and where you are as a dad, as a husband. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, I, I believe this makes you a, a perfect guest for this show, and I'm honored to start this show off with you and your story. And so, I, so with that, we're gonna kick it off. You ready? Yes, sir. I'm ready. So, when you were dreaming, um, and you were in the infancy stage of ministry or whatever, you know, at that point you were dreaming about in your life, um, what? What was the first step you took that you can remember that that got you to where you are? Or do you think it was like essential to where you are today? Um, so let me just go back. So I met you in 2005. Mm -hmm. I met the man that's now my father-in-law and senior pastor, Bishop Miller, in 2000. I want to say 2004. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was traveling, speaking, little conferences here and there for four years prior to meeting him. I didn't get into ministry because I thought I would be popular because I didn't know what that was. Mm -hmm. I didn't get into it to lead a big church. I didn't have any of them where I was from. Mm -hmm. I got into it simply because I wasn't even known the term ministry. 
I, I, I began to get invitations to go speak, really just to share my testimony. Right. And it led from one thing into another. So one, my my genesis of ministry would be, man, I just really wanted to share Jesus. I wasn't in it for money. I wasn't in it for crowds. Right. I wasn't in it for for fame, if that makes sense. No. Um, but part of that, once I got into it, I would say for the right reasons, as it were, I began to get invitations and uh, one thing led to another. I met the man that's now my father-in-law, Bishop Tony Miller, and something that I would say that took my life, two things really, and uh, just catapulted them. One, I would tell anybody, man, try to be a, a, a perfectionist in whatever area you're called to do. Mm -hmm. If you're going to be a janitor, be the best janitor they've ever seen. Right. Sweet, like it's a passion. Right. You know, mop. Like it's your, it's your masterpiece, man. Right. So for me in ministry, quote unquote, yeah, I am a preacher. I work for a church. So I need to learn a little bit about the Bible. Right. I need to be a person of prayer. Um, I need to be able to teach a little bit. And those are things I think anybody should do. So uh, I don't, I honestly, I like to be honest. I don't do it now, mm -hmm. but there was a time for probably about a year and a half. I probably put an hour and a half to two hours a day just reading something praying. I wasn't working at the time. I had a lot of free time. I invested in myself. Right. So invest in yourself. But the second thing that to me I would say that just really just took my life to a whole new place is I got up under somebody mm. who was a father. And that's Bishop Tony Miller. And because of him, my life went to a whole new place. Do you know that what you discover through personal study and revelation, you can never lose? Never. Never you never lose it. What about that? One of my favorites, Isaiah 55, 10 through 11. Isaiah says, the same way the rain and the snow come from the heavens and they water the seeds that are in the earth and they make it bud and flourish. So shall, so shall your word be that goes out of my mouth. When a word comes from heaven, he says the same way snow and rain fall on the dry earth and they water their seeds and they make those seeds germinate and the seeds begin to be fruitful. He said that's how the word is that comes out of God's mouth. If you let it fall in the right place in your heart, you may not see nothing in a week or two, but give it some time. That word will make what's in you begin to bud for. So Mr. Josh Jones is now driving. Yes, sir. <laughs> you asked me one of the things that maybe I would tell somebody that really helped me kind of launch out. Yeah. And I had really two things. One is uh, me. You know, I didn't have... I didn't have a framework for doing it to be popular or to be in a big church. I just really was passionate about sharing what Jesus did for me. That's how I got started. And I would say, uh, you know, be a perfectionist in your area. If you're a janitor and you mop, like that's your mastery. That's what you do. If you clean mirrors, then you clean mirrors with the best of them. You learn everything about cleaning mirrors. Read books about cleaning mirrors. Uh, go to seminars about cleaning mirrors. And the best thing I ever did and still probably have done um, as I got with a better mirror cleaner than myself and for me that's my father-in-law and now our team here at the Gate Church so when I connected myself to Bishop Miller he really began to challenge me and uh, make me better and the thing that really helped me is um, my gift has grown since I've been here but he didn't necessarily care about my gift as much as he did developing my character and making me see things a different way and challenging me on how I view things not to prove me wrong but just to let me see there's always a different way of doing things. And so be the best you can in your area by learning everything you can about it. And then for me, it was a father, but I found a father or a mentor in the area that I thought I was called to. That helped me a ton. Yeah, that, that's really good. I mean, I think a lot of people don't take the time to learn their crap. They don't. Uh, I did that when I first started preaching. Preach random messages, yep. right? Yep. And I went back, and so I remember, like, like a year ago, went back and listened to some of my early messages. I was like, "Oh my God, <laughs> did I really say that? Because that's not biblical at all, right?" Just kind of paint a picture for us of what the early days looked like for you when you when you first started in ministry. Okay, so once again, let me go back to even before I came here. I got born again in 2001. Um, I began to get opportunities to share my testimony by the end of that year. They called it preaching. I didn't know what preaching was. I was just sharing my testimony, right? Um, and so eventually that began to happen about five to eight times a month. And then that's when I got drawn into this crazy system, man, and, uh, of, of 
really not system, really just world of ministry where it became about how much money you can get for an appointment, all this kind of crazy stuff, right? I met Bishop Miller in 2005, and then my whole world got shifted. So I was preaching for about four, four and a half years before I ever met Bishop Miller or heard of his ministry at the time, which was called Destiny. I joined the internship in 2005, which was my first year with you. And uh, I'll never forget it because I, I, I was excited because I was with this dynamic pastor, this dynamic minister, Tony Miller and his amazing team. He's world renowned. He, uh, you know, our country seeking after leaders just like him. I was glad to be a part of, of his life and what he was doing. What I didn't know was, is that him making me better, the path was completely different than what I would have picked. I thought he was going to sit down and say, read a Bible story to me and say, now show me three points you would preach out of this story. Or, you know, where do you want to go uh, preach at next? Or, you know, just stuff like that. But that was nothing like that. Yeah. What he did for us, and you, you were part of that group, is uh, we traveled around with him. We took Bible college classes. We took, at the time, what we called impartation classes. Yeah. Uh, they challenged us. Um, for every Friday, we have what we call special blessings on the campus. We clean toilets. We vacuum mm -hmm. floors. Yep. We wipe down walls. We picked up trash that. from outside. And I did that for four years. Wow. All along, I was traveling with him, um, toting Bibles, serving at conferences, doing a whole lot of stuff behind the scenes. And I had to die to people knowing me, my name, my gift, and that kind of stuff, right? And most people in ministry will tell you, man, if you want to be known in ministry, you better look out for yourself because God has gifted you and you got a gift in your life, right? But here's what Jesus said. If you can't be faithful with what belongs to another man, Luke 16, you'll never be entrusted to what's rightfully your own. Yeah. And so I was challenged about being faithful with what belonged to another man. If I couldn't clean toilets faithfully in his ministry, and if I couldn't be faithful coming to class and show up on time and stay late when needed and clean tables and all the other stuff, then one day what was rightfully mine will never make its way toward me. And so my days in ministry, early days in ministry, were really just a whole lot of serving and developing my own self privately um, off of a stage, right? Because I learned if I, if I live to be a star, then when I get on stage, man, I'm going to die. And you know this, Pastor Fred. It's not what happens on stage that kills. It's what happens behind the scenes. Right. And Bishop Miller and Destiny Ministry really developed us behind the scenes for ministry. Right. Because I, I wish somebody would have told me this when I got started. What I fell in love with about ministry was only about 10% of it. And that was on stage, on a platform. Right. The whole other 90% stapling papers, making phone calls, oh. counseling, the dirty stuff. Right. Nobody never told me about that. Yeah, yeah. You don't get that teaching in sem seminary. No, nope, nobody tells you about they that. They don't tell you you're going to get cussed out a few times. They don't. Or... They, they, they failed to mention that. Right. They don't tell you that you're going to have to spend your last dime. Or, uh, they, don't, they, don't, they, don't, they don't tell you all that. And so. maybe I can help somebody because I knew I had a calling on my life, right? right? As much as you do, if you listen to this, yeah, you have a calling on your life too. You don't get to pick your calling. And you definitely don't get to pick your process. That's so good. Because you'll always go easy on yourself. Wow. Right? Yeah. But you do get to make a choice as to whether or not you're going to do what the Father's put in your heart to do. That's so good. Right? Right. So when God begins to develop us, we want to be overnight successes. We want to be shooting stars, right? But nobody's going to see the tears behind the scenes, the preparation and development behind the scenes. They might call you overnight success, but there's no such thing as that. Right. And what I, this is huge is I wanted God to microwave me so I was done. But Holy Spirit told me, I'll never forget this. He said, I don't use micro microwaves. I use crock pots. That's so good. So God will always slow cook your potential, right? The difference between King Saul and David was this. Saul got anointed and went straight to the throne. Wow. Period. Right. He had no process, no development. David got anointed in a pasture and thought he was going straight to the palace. But God in mercy... Let him stay in the pasture for a little bit. Wow. So don't don't think that what God called you to do is not going to happen because it hadn't happened overnight. It's okay. The God that called you is faithful. I had to learn that the hard way. Right, right. So I, 
I know like many of our viewers who are watching right now, mm -hmm. there was this, probably this point you hit in your journey where what God showed you, maybe you started to wonder, is this really going to happen? Yes, like, sir. Or whatever you felt God was placing in your heart. Um, you felt like, man, is, is am I crazy? Is this, am I just mm -hmm. doing stuff? What what helped you get through that time? What was it? This is going to be overly simplistic, right? And this isn't a preacher point. This is how I made it. And to be honest, if I could be honest, this is how I'm making it right now. Is I remind myself that the God that called me, man, he's faithful. I mean, he is super duper faithful. So if God called you to do something, Philippians 1, 6, he that hath began a good work in you will be faithful to perform it mm -hmm. until the day of the Lord. And so I, if he begins it, then he is going to make it happen. Now what happens is this, is you get a word, you believe the word, you get a prophecy, you get a dream, you get a burning desire, and I believe this thing is going to happen. And then time happens and you're like, right. man, I thought this thing was going to happen. Right. You got to begin to be your biggest cheerleader yourself. Uh, you got to believe in what God called you to do when the preacher's not telling you about it, when your spouse isn't telling you about it. Yeah. You have to believe that. What did David do? David was anointed to be king, and then he living in the woods, dodging spears, running from armies. He should have been sleeping on a king's bed, but he's sleeping in grass. Wow. He should have been eating at a king's table, but he's eating in a cave. So what? how did he make it through that? The Bible says he did this. He encouraged himself in the Lord. Right. And so there's times I look in the mirror and I say, Josh Jones, man, this is your year. Josh Jones ain't nothing look like it's happening, but something's happening. I literally do this. Right. This didn't preach. I literally do this all the time. Wow. So good. I just, I really, I just encourage myself and I go back and I listen to what God said. Um, I can go back to 2005 when we got prophecies, if you'll remember, at the end of that internship year. Bro, so many of those things have begun to happen in my wow. life. Wow. And that was in 2005. Right. But most people don't get a word and it come to pass immediately. Come right? right? Genesis 3, uh, uh, is it Genesis 3.15? God prophesied a, 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 a the seed of a woman was going to press the head of the serpent. That was 4,000 years later. <laughs> uh, Abraham, 75, he got a word about having a son. Come on. And through him, God would bless the planet. He was 90, we're really 100 years old, over 25 years before that happened. Right. David got anointed between 13 and 15, said he was going to be king. He didn't sit on the throne until maybe 15 or so years later. Right. So we're not the first people this happened to. <laughs> right. So you know what I'm saying? It's kind of a theme of it, ministry, really. That's really or, God's or, way. Or really, I mean, that translates into business and everything. I can't right. tell. I've heard you get words in our first year. Right. And it's just now beginning to happen in Come your on. life. Right. I mean. And the journey you have to go through yeah. to get there. And, and a lot of times you get a word and God has to break other stuff off of you before you can actually reach Man. what he wants where he wants to get you to, right? Don't you think God in mercy doesn't let it just happen? Right. I'm I'm grateful he didn't just let it happen. Because I would have squandered and messed up. Wow. Completely. Yeah. And so uh, you know, he knew I needed to be married and he, he knew I needed <laughs> All these different things that he's given me. I would say this too, like talking. Remember, every, every word has a timetable to it. Right. How many times is this script is this phrase in the Bible? And it came to pass. And it came to pass. Right. And it came to pass. It's, it's, it's all through the Bible. In Psalms, maybe it's Psalms 103 or Psalms 105, somewhere in that area, um, God is kind of giving a little bit of a dissertation on the nation of Israel how they developed as a nation, how he brought them through the wilderness, and how the whole thing came about. And he gets on Joseph. It says he sent a man ahead of them called Joseph. And it says this, they set his feet in fetters, and they put him behind iron bars wow. until it was time for his word to come to pass. And the word of the Lord tested him. So Joseph got a word that he was going to be a ruler or a leader, but every word has a timetable on it, man. Right. And, when, and then it says this, and when it was time for the word to come to pass, the bars opened for Joseph, he got out. And then he, out of nowhere, got the authority to put people behind bars if he wanted to. So don't quit right now where you are on your journey over your dream. It could be a marriage. It could be just a personal aspiration that you have, man. Don't quit on it because there is a timetable that's ticking. And when it comes and it's time, if you've been faithful in preparation, here's the definition of breakthrough. When all of your preparation meets God's opportunity, that's called breakthrough. Wow. What happens when God's opportunity comes 
for your word that you got to come to pass, but you failed to prepare for it. That's, That's so called missed opportunity and frustration. That's so good. So, man, I want okay. you to share what you would say is the greatest piece of advice you ever received. And then if you could talk to a young leader or someone starting a business, a ministry, whatever it is, what would you what would you be what what do you think would be the most important thing for them to know right now? Oh wow. Uh, man, that's a huge question. So let me just answer out of my heart, um, being extremely authentic with you. Um, the most important thing God ever told you was the last thing he told you. That's what he's wanting obedience to was the last thing that he told you and for me in ministry this is my world this is my field right now remember that there are earthly standards that bring success numbers money houses following i think god's definition of success is completely different than the world's definition of success and for you guys that are involved in the world of ministry don't you ever get them confused because if you're pastor a 20 member church you'll feel less significant than the guy pastoring 2000 right. and to be honest i preached in churches of thousands and i ministered in churches of 20 and 50 and sometimes the guy that's got 50 is doing far more than the guy that's got 2000 but because we confuse what success looks like we get it all confused so for me remember what success is in the kingdom and and it should be universal if it's really kingdom it'll work anywhere here's what success in the kingdom looks like to me am i doing to the fullest of my potential and ability what papa asked me to do period right if i'm doing that i don't let the numbers bother me i don't let the finances bother me if i'm doing that that was huge for me that piece of advice set me free because I was comparing myself to what I saw Fred do on Instagram, to what I thought saw Furtick do, to what I saw. And most of those guys been in it for years and a lot longer, right? And right. the truth was, we're at two different places in life. So I had to be faithful to what God called me to do. That set me free. Right. Um, if I could tell somebody something about their business, their ministry, don't quit. Right. Keep going. <laughs> we live in seasons, right? Seasons happen on this planet. Don't quit. Just keep going. Don't turn into a permanent stage what's only supposed to be a season. Wow. Don't turn into a permanent state what's only supposed to be a season. It, my wife laughs at me sometimes, some of my leaders do, but I tell them this, I find it very hard to have a bad day. That doesn't mean I don't get curveballs thrown at me, that don't mean my feelings don't get hurt, that don't mean I don't get disappointed. But I'm gonna laugh every single day, I'm gonna joke every single day because God is good yeah. and I make a choice to rejoice and be glad in it. That's so good. So in, 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 let me say this, the psalmist said, this is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. That verse has two parts. I live by this. I can't make a day. Only God can make a day. But I can make a choice to rejoice and be glad in it. Right. Laugh every day and don't give up. It's gonna happen. Well, there it is. You heard it. You heard it from Josh. And it's been an incredible time. I hope you have gleaned from this, you have learned and uh, we'll definitely have Josh back on here again. We had we had quick change. I know you're probably watching like, how did y'all go from being in chairs to in the car? That's life. Right, that's how we work, we roll, you know, we got this thing. So, uh, man, I really enjoyed you being on and uh, I hope you enjoyed being on. I wish you nothing but the best in, in ministry and I'm looking forward to see where God is going to continue to take you I think it's incredible the stuff that you um, are a part of and what you are doing out here in Oklahoma City and across this nation. So I thank you for being on the show and uh, thank you, man. Appreciate it's, it. It's my privilege, man. Sure. You guys make sure and tell your friends to subscribe to this channel. Look up Prevail Church and uh, hey, man, God's amazing. 2018 is going to be an awesome year for you. Yes, sir. Do me a favor. Hit that subscribe button. Let us know in the comments if you like this video and uh, let us know what impacted you the most. And uh, we, we're looking forward to reading them and answer some questions. If you have questions, put them down there in the comments. We'll, we'll answer some questions below and things of the nature. And do me one more favor, share this video with somebody that you know needs it. All right, thank you for watching. And uh, holla at your boy on the next one. Peace out. <laughs>